What's up guys, Billy from Mad Max again and today I bring you another video of my 11.5, this time it's reconfigured. Alright, so before I had a BCM MCMR rail on here and I ran into some issues with it. It was actually slightly bent, if you looked at it from the top the barrel was off centered from the middle of the rail. So the Black Friday sale for Geisley came around and I've been waiting for that all year so I could indulge with the Mark IV Federal HRT rail and the OD anodized green a lot of people weren't happy about it this year a lot of complaints from guys to Geisley but big fan it took a little bit longer than expected it took about eight weeks to ship but definitely worth the wait so with the mark IV, you got rails on the this would be the three and the nine they're about two inches long and then you got the QD cups on both sides and then underneath with this generation there's like a four inch rail section underneath instead of the short rail set the two inch rail section underneath so the big difference between this and the MCMR is that you're sacrificing how light the MCMR was for rigidity that's a word durability and strength like this rail is no joke the, a lot of people are complaining about the color of the anodizing but whatever dude it also has QD cups in the back here on both sides as well as the front I like to run it in the back it's personal preference it gives you the options so you might have noticed on the rail here on the left side while I'm writing I put my left hand up front I am running the light up there because with the pressure pad up top I would when I would shoot I would naturally squeeze down with my left hand while I was pulling the gun into me and I would get discharged like the light would turn on and that's probably a no-go if you're in a situation where you need to stay dark so I like it up here and then if I need light I can turn it on if I have to. I've been doing that with all my rifles recently with that I have lights on, getting rid of the pressure pad. Might go back to it in the future, but who knows. Up top here, I am running the Daniel Defense fixed front sight post. I've been toying with the idea of going with the Knight's Armament, like the regular one, and I have a taupe just laying around and like, I don't know, they're the hotness, so like, it'd be cool to have on there. However, I'm a big fan of having, you know, an aim and reference point. Shout out to all the 13 Bravos out there. When you're running through, you don't have to find the red dot. As long as you find that up close, you're going to be close to the target. But I'm toying with the idea of going back and forth. Probably staying with this. But, you know, things change. I would like to in the future get a D-ball for, like, night vision and whatnot. That would fall in line with the whole inspiration of this gun I got here which is the FBI HRT 
carbine, I guess you could call it. Underneath here, I got the Magpul AFG. I believe it's the AFG 2. There's a slight difference with how the polymer is. It like, comes up a little higher in here, but same, same. So this actually gives you a little bit more grip for those fellers out there with the big paws from what I had with the BCM CAG. I do like this more. It just feels like you got more to grab onto with this rail. If the rail was slimmer, maybe the CAG would make sense, but like this is hefty, get a hefty angle foregrip, good to go. But big fan of that, that goes to the HRT. The barrel I'm running here is the Roscoe 11.5 that I've been running for the past however long I've had been running this gun. Big fan of that, no complaints at all. With the red dot I can hit make hits at 200 yards without a problem at all. I'm running a neutral timed close time work comp. It works. I do like the knocks more that's on my 12.5 but that's neither here nor there. So another change I made with the upper here is that I'm running a Spikes Tactical Nickel Boron Light Bolt Carrier. It's a bolt carrier that's like drilled out and has a bunch of holes and stuff on it. it makes it lighter. It doesn't make a difference to me. Not at all. But it does clean up easier so I guess that's a plus. I had it laying around and I felt like it should get some use. And then up top here. That's another major difference. Running the EXPS3. It's the tannadized one. Got rid of the hollow sun. Well, I still have the hollow sun, but I took the hollow sun off this and I actually put a new mount on it so that's not crooked anymore. But also, for a different day, there's not much you can say about EOTEX. They are what they are. If you love them, you love them. If you don't, you don't. Big fan myself. Now, up top here, got the USMC CAC flip up. Don't really use them that much, but they're there if I need it. And then another change that I did was the guys, the airborne charging handle back here, had it laying around from the same gun that I got rid of that this came off of. So the lower from the other videos, essentially the same. Only difference is I'm running the Geisley Super 42 braided buffer spring. Doesn't make a difference to me. Still a Geisley Horror had it, gonna use it. It works fine. And then back here got the Lunar Concepts split thingy thing that holds the brace together. It's fine. I don't dislike it so I guess that's a, a plus. And then the trigger which also hasn't changed if you haven't seen the other videos. It is the Geisley, it's either the Geisley 3 gun or the Geisley Rapid Fire. I forget which one's which. They're the same trigger, kind of like the Geisley 2 stage and the Geisley SSA, but one has more quality control than the other, but they work the same. It is um, a rolling brake. There's no wall at all, if that makes sense, but you'll get the idea. It just, I'm sorry. It just rolls straight through. No distinct reset. It's just for shooting fast and up close. I'm a fan. It serves its purpose, especially with a short boy like this. You can be blasting away. BCM Mod O grip, I believe. Big fan. Nice vertical grip angle. It's kind of like the K2 and the B5 systems. They're all, I like them all equally. No preference. Sling here. Edgar Sherman Designs. This is an earlier generation one. This is definitely top two slings for me between this and the Ferro Concepts. You can't go wrong with either. They're both great slings. Great companies. Go support them. So another big difference that you might have noticed, if you follow me on Instagram, which you should, at Mad Max Guns, 2Ds, 2Xs, is the paint job. For a little while over the winter, I was running what I was calling a John Deere Barbershop sign. It was just yellow and green spiraled all the way around. And it, it was fun while it lasted. But the reason I did it is because I wanted to go with a FDE and like an OD green over it and let, let it wear. So there's like a contrast in there. You can see right around here where it's starting to happen. And there are a couple little places, but it's you get the point. 
But yeah, so that's starting to happen. The rail, I'm not gonna paint that because I'm too much of a bitch. And like the HRT rail is known for that color, so I'm just you know gonna leave that where it's at. But overall, for a like just a run out there and blaster gun from 100 yards and in, I like to shoot this like up close for like running drills and everything from 50 yards and in typically. Big fan of it. Between this and my 12.5, those are like definitely my two go-tos. The 12.5 could push out further just because run the NX-8 and get a little more velocity out of the extra inch of barrel. These two guns are going to be like my two go-tos moving forward. I'm sure you saw in the intro video, like it's just super easy to control. The 12.5 does have slightly less recoil. That probably has to do with a long, uh, a little like, that probably has to do with different dwell time and it definitely has to do with having the A5 system. That's something I might switch out in the future, but I'm, it's not a priority by any means. By all accounts, this gun is 100% just a shooter. And really the only things I'm gonna probably change or add to in the future is an IR device. If anybody knows where to come up with an IR device on the cheap cheap, DM me, please. That's something I've been looking for. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any more questions about this gun in particular or anything else, drop it in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe. If you liked it, thanks. If you didn't like it, eat a dick. And check out some videos over here and here. And if you don't subscribe already, make sure you do. My face is going to be right there. I'll see you next time. Beers. I like three dollar wells and some old honky tonk bar. I know by the smell, some old drunk on the bar stew on a merle hat or two. That's my cat.